Uh, he is joining us. You know, we're two and a half months into 2019, the same amount of time Little Rock has had a new mayor. Mayor Frank Scott Jr. is here with us. Uh, Frank, good afternoon, or good, good morning to you. Yeah, I, I mean, think it's the morning. Yeah, yeah I know. I, I keep looking at you, and, and, and he has been nonstop working. Mm -hmm. uh, two months on the job. I mean, did you realize that it was going to be this in-depth, this, uh, you know, run it all ends? Not at all. I think when you, you, you understand it is a 24-7 job, you don't really realize what that actually means mm -hmm. to your body and to your mind. Uh, but it's exciting. I'm having the time of my life. Great. Yeah. You've been really busy, especially with searching for the next police chief. We've narrowed it down to four candidates, two that are in-house, two looking on the outside. What's it going to take to find that right candidate? Because you have two who know Little Rock, two have a little bit of an outside perspective, but what's the one thing that you think you'd like to look for here? Well, I think it's more than just one thing. I think first and foremost, we may have to make certain that we go after the best candidate for the best fit for the city of Little Rock. I want to make certain that the next police chief has true experience on, on how to actually really be a cop, being on the beat, understanding true management experience experience, how to change cultures and also deal with an existing culture while you're trying to create that change at the same time and be able to really communicate with all communities no matter the socioeconomic status. So as we look at the four finalists for this job, you've got two again that uh, as Suzanne was mentioning in-house, two out of state. Is there anything that weighs heavier when you're looking at this and you're looking at the, what each candidate may have? What's the most important factor? How do we change our crime perception mm -hmm. and how do we change our crime statistics and how, how do we do something different than what we've always done in the past? And so that's exactly what's going to be key to me as, we're, as I'm making this decision. Great. Well, we're going to look forward to that and keep tabs on, you know, the process here. Top golf. We've been what? talking about that. We've been following you on Twitter. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I he know DJ's this. excited. Okay, so... Can we get one? Well, first, I want to make certain this was not a, a true strategic research at all, uh, but it's the power of social media. Literally, I was responding to a constituent about uh, whether or not we should have a Top Golf. I'm actually a fan of Top Golf, mm -hmm. uh, and literally responded. And next thing I know, Top Golf actually responded back to me. And what that means is now, through a lot of conversations since that time back in December, right after the election, we actually have a meeting this coming Tuesday with Top Golf representatives. Wow. So we're excited about that. We I think got chill bump. Yeah. <laughs> we got a real no good opportunity. Way. Real good that opportunity. is fantastic. Are, how good of a golfer are you there, Mayor? Not good at all. Okay. Can we see that, can we see that swing? So. No, not at all. I, I, I want to stay the mayor. So, what, what so we've, got, we've got just a little bit of time left, but so you've got a meeting Tuesday. What do you hope to come out of it? You hope them to say, Let's yes. make it happen? Yeah, my, my goal is to be the chief growth officer no matter the type of job or quality of life. As you all know, that uh, DJ is one of our new ambassadors to the city oh, of Little yeah, Rock right. as it relates yeah. to quality of life. And so hopefully we can bring him in and help close the deal. All so. right, so That's amazing. when Top Golf comes here, the first party is the one that we're hosting with you. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Let's do all it. On the